Hey podcast listeners, Gossip Grid here, your guide to F1's Paddock Elites. Hello everyone, welcome back to Gossip Grid, where I give you everything F1 pop culture related, and it is going to be very hard to follow up all the fun that is the Miami Grand Prix that I gave you last week, but hey, I'm going to try anyway. So uh, we actually got this news during Miami Grand Prix weekend at uh, the F1 Accelerate convention that was going on at the exact same time, but there was too much going on and we had to wait to take some time to talk about this. So it was announced that Jerry Bruckheimer and Joseph Kaczynski, who's directing the new F1 Apple TV movie with Lewis Hamilton and Brad Pitt, that there's going to be an 11th team added at Silverstone this year. And people like panic that there's going to be real on track racing and Brad Pitt's going to be in the car. And it's like, guys, everyone calm down. That is logistically really not <laughs> what's going to happen. Um, so Brad Pitt will be doing some on track action, not during the race. He will be driving an F2 adapted car that was designed by Mercedes this year. And obviously, due to safety reasons and complications that would cause with regulations of the entire competition, it would literally be virtually impossible for this to be filmed during actual F1 action, besides like getting the real race as B-roll, which they will be doing, which is really cool. Um, you know, our one of our men that we reference all the time with the things that he quotes on, CEO Stefano Domenicalo, had literally talked about this recently that it's going to be one of the first movies to be filming within a live racing event like this and that it is going to be very invasive but they're going to be doing everything they can to keep it in control but they want to show that no matter what's going on f1 never stops so i'm excited to i'm always excited for silverstone and i'm definitely going to be excited this year to see what's going to be happening and brad pitt's going to be in full makeup costume uniform character all weekend if he's gonna be on track in between sessions like you would definitely if you're at silverstone get to see it but i wonder if like we'll be watching fp2 and we'll just get like random shots of brad pitt walking around with like massive film crews following like i'd be interested if they are able to keep this off the normal broadcast and i hope they aren't i hope we get to get little sneak previews like in the background or anything It would be smart of F1 to do that. I would be really shocked if Mercedes doesn't. I really could see Mercedes taking advantage of this because they're like designing the car and this is a part of the thing with Lewis. Right, like, hello, please do this. It's great marketing and I want to see more BTS and just, that's so cool. It's like a whole extra team and things. Uh, and any more insight on this movie that we can get the better and that's like really when we'll get probably our first look of like what the movie's gonna look like so very excited about that now on to another I guess you could say another Mercedes related story Lewis Hamilton was at the Lakers last week game six against the Warriors he was sitting courtside with his business partner and actor Leonardo DiCaprio they are both part owners of the Neat Burger all plant based burger co so they were sitting together at the game and who knows how much those tickets were actually worth but I bet they paid probably nothing and got to sit there for good PR um, That's but not every true. Lakers don't do that they don't so, yeah so uh, actually, I don't know about Madison Square Garden but um, I, like if you went to a Milwaukee game that would be the case but Staples Center people like so many celebrities want those tickets that 100% they're paying for them. The, like, well, of all those people, I guess, you know, Leo and Lewis are probably doing fine and can definitely right. afford them. But um, if you see celebrities but... at Lakers games, they're paying for those tickets because there's just too many celebrities who would want to go to those games who are so, who are relevant enough to do so. Yeah, Fun fact. Like, this game. Right. Fun fact that uh, because so many celebrities go to Lakers games, they'll like show them on the broadcast. And I actually got a call from my father, who is not an F1 fan, like, Lewis Hamilton was at the Lakers game. <laughs> did you see him? Because they did like a whole, like they went through a lot of celebrities, but they, like Lewis got his own shot with like a byline and everything. On the yeah, broadcast. the screenshot of that uh, caused a, a, a really talented fan did a, a good job of photoshopping that photo to say eight time world champion and people thought that the Lakers organization made like a super call out because it looked really real. Um, but it was not. But you know it is. 
<laughs> that's yeah. not obvious from my current attire of how I feel about that. Uh-huh. But after the game, uh, Lewis shared photos of him sitting front row and just added the caption, great game, great energy. So he had a fabulous time. It was another really big, interesting event going on this weekend. So in Venice, why were so many F1 faces hanging out in Venice for three days? Well, this is actually what the people of the internet have started to be calling the F1 Royal Wedding. Um, so we, this wedding included guests that were Toto Wolff, Susie Wolff, Stefano Domenicalo, Kali, and uh, Daniel Ricciardo was in the wedding. And this all makes a lot of sense because it was Chloe Stroll and um, Scotty James who were getting married. Who are these people? How are they related to Formula One? Chloe Stroll, daughter of (gasps) Lauren Stroll and sister of Lance Stroll. Scotty James, Australian snowboarder, Red Bull athlete, Danny Rick's BFF. So actually Lance, of all people, introduced them and said to his sister, I just met your future husband. Love that story. Really incredible. Really funny how these paths all cross. But that's why so many F1 people spent three days in Venice this past weekend. And last fun bit of news are to American U.S. fans. We are getting an F1 arcade in the U.S. They currently have one in London that does really cool events like watch parties. They have a ton of simulators in this arcade, and I'm really, really dying to go. So they're opening one in Boston in early 2024. It is supposed to be at the Boston Seaport with... (laughs) 69 full motion racing simulators lots of food drink experiences an electric atmosphere literal exact quote and a perfect game watching experience race watching experience in london they have watch parties that have competitions and prizes and trivia and all that different kind of stuff and like a dj so i'm really hoping that they keep that same energy and type of activities in boston and i definitely will take a visit there next year once it's open So definitely maybe not as jam-packed, as exciting as Miami Grand Prix, but I always think F1 and pop culture moments are pretty great. So that's all I got for you this week. I thought it was just as exciting. Just a little bit less Vin Diesel. Thank you so much for listening to this segment from episode 17 of Gridwalk. Holy moly. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go uh, for a ton of more F1 videos. But You've made it this far into this video. Why not listen to the rest of the full podcast? You can look, you just got to click right there. It's like so easy. Click, look, ready, move your mouse and click or your finger. Click, 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 click.